Hi, it's Dr. Saab. Today, I'm going to show you how to use the main functions on the Mercedes-Benz A-Class 2015 and 2018 model. Please check out my summary guide, which you can download for free. Just follow the description below and click on the link. So to start the video, I'm going to open up the car. And I'm going to show you the fuel filler cap. Here you can check your tire pressures and to use the fuel cover. Here you have your tire pressures. Useful little message to remind you what fuel to put in for your car. You can see this piece is broken due to wear and tear. Now moving to the rear of the car. To open the tail gate, what you do release the boot like that and now you've got access to the boot you have your first aid box which sometimes is hiding here you got your 12 volt socket tether points you've got some storage nets which is useful more access to the rear lights if needed You've got these carry hooks, so you can put your shopping bags, loose items there. Storage net, which I've got a air freshener there, just to keep the boot nice and fresh. I can take down this parcel shelf as well. This pulls off. Now I can take off the parcel shelf. If I put that on the side. I've got a nice big open boot. And then I've got un access to the under tray. I've got this hook, which then hooks up to the top here. Now I can access the under tray area, which reveals another first aid box, the book pack with the manual inside, your locking wheel nut, and then emergency stuff here. If your tire pressures were ever low, you can use this to inflate your tires. And then I think this is for the repair puncture kit, which I would recommend never using. And I'll show you shortly what you should do in the, an event where it is deflated. This is a very useful space using the under tray. I'll just stick this back. Now everything's back. I'll just close the boot. Or trunk as the Americans like to say. Now I'll just show you the rear of the car. Now I'm just going to quickly show you how to use the folding seats. And you can do the same for the other side. It's 60 40 split which means this, this seat goes down this section and then that seat is the 60 section over here you can see I've got the child seat in there now something to mention is the child locks and at the moment I can see that's off and that is on for this door and down for off to unlock the car all I do is press that button and what I would recommend is watching my other video on how to use a Mercedes-Benz key. Your car may have keyless entry, which this car doesn't. Check out the link in the description for that video. This area is for controlling your seat comfort. Here we is where you can get extra fire support if needed. This area controls this part of the seat. This area controls this part of the seat. And then this allows the seat to go up or down completely. Now I'm going to move into the car. So here you have your electric windows. And then here are your electric mirrors. All you do is select which side you want to control. And then use these arrows. After you finish, you can just leave it alone. This button will fold the electric mirrors if you need to. And you can set it to 
fold when you lock the car as well. For the windows, your front, your rear, and then if you press this button, that will lock the windows at the back. So then your children can't use the controls or rear passengers can't control the windows. Moving towards the steering wheel, you can see you've got uh, the lights. I always just leave in auto, but you can take full control and put full beams on side and parking light. I would recommend leaving the lights in auto. Now to start the car, all you do is use the key. This car doesn't have keyless start. I can't push a button here, but all I'll do is twist. That's one. Twist again, that's two. Once you've given it a moment, then start the car by twisting all the way around. First, what I'm gonna do is just show you what this stalk does, just behind the steering wheel. You have your indicators and then full beam by pulling. If you push, that will then put on the automatic lights and try and show that in a future video. To use the wipers, all you do is twist and you can see the wipers are working. If you put it into this mode, this is a slow automatic uh, mode, which will then put your wipers on. Again, a faster automatic mode and then these thick lines these are to show that it, these are basically manual like your traditional wipers if you push this in that will then spray the windscreen and then it will wipe the wash off and give you a nice clean windscreen now moving to this side here you've got your gear stalk and to use this all you do is push the brake, select down for drive, and you'll notice on here it's now in drive. If I push all the way up, it then engages the reverse gear, and then I've got the reverse camera. If I push this, that then puts the car into park. If I touch it just slightly, that then puts it into neutral. And you can see it doesn't really do anything if I just touch it slightly, but if I push it all the way down, it then puts it into drive, all the way up, and then it puts it into reverse. And when I'm ready to switch off the car, I can put it into park. Something I needed to mention was the paddle shifters. You've got these paddle shifters behind the steering wheel. Plus is to go up a gear, minus is to go down a gear. And if I select plus, you'll notice that it goes to M1, and if I keep pressing it while I'm driving, it will go up a gear. If I want to put it back to auto mode, just select drive, just like that. If the car is accidentally put into uh, manual mode, you can then change it back yourself by selecting drive, or the car will eventually put itself back into auto mode to protect its gearbox. What I need to show you is the handbrake. So if you do put the car to drive and press the accelerator, which I'll do now, it releases the handbrake. So you'll see the light go. To put the handbrake on, let's say you're parking back at home, all I ever do is put the car into park. And then when I switch off the car, the electric handbrake comes on. And before I leave the car, I always make sure that light's on. If for whatever reason you wanna put the handbrake on yourself, to release the handbrake, all you do, pull this switch, it then releases the handbrake. And if I push, that then puts the handbrake on. And you can see the light just there. I'm just gonna show you how to use the reverse gear and the reverse camera. First, I'll just put on the seat belt because I've got a light here saying I need to put my seatbelt on. After I put the seatbelt on, the light goes away. What I'll do, I'll just engage reverse. You can see it's on reverse. The reverse camera pops up and you can see these yellow lines here. That's to signify a car can fit in that space, potentially. 
and this little square this little line here this is the recommended space that I should be leaving between the car and the garage just there the red line that means that's the end of the car so if you go past that red line you will be hitting the garage in this case so let's show you the reverse function and you can see if I leave that space let's show you what that looks like you can see it's a good gap enough for me to walk and potentially like someone with a wheelchair or a pram can go around that area let's go back into the car let's put the car back into reverse and I'm going to show you something else now as I reverse you'll see I've got parking sensor light I'm just going to put the car into drive select reverse again and you'll see two uh, yellow lights on that rear sensor and if I keep going closer you'll see those lights going closer and closer to each other and if I go back onto the reverse camera you can see I'm getting very very close so ideally you want to use the camera and that parking sensor just there I can also see the sensor using my mirror if I then twist this rotary dial I can then select this camera angle and you can see I get a bit more vision around the rear just a little bit more but it's nice to have now I've put the car back in drive and I've turned the car around towards the garage because I wanted to show you the front parking sensor and how to use that so you'll see here I've got my front parking sensor and as I'm getting closer to the garage you can see the lights are flashing more and more and if I get to about that much that's to say I'm really really close and the car basically is recommending to, re to reverse so let's show you what that looks like just put the car into park you can see it's really close to the garage I don't like being that close so I will reverse that amount of gap is just right let's have a look that looks just right now next I'm going to show you how to use the buttons on your steering wheel so these buttons here control that screen in front of you these buttons over here control this screen mainly what I'll do first I'll just show you these buttons and what they do so if you press up or down you get these options on this particular screen which is very useful if you need to reset this to zero you know if you I usually do this when I fuel my car to full I like to reset to zero and I do that by selecting OK reset trip meter I'll select down and then I will select OK once I do that you can see it's now zero you can do the same again for the other screens if you require now if I select right or left buttons so let's say I select right right now I'm on the trip it's part of the screen I can also display my sat nav so if you enter a destination on your sat nav it will also display here which I think is very useful audio so whatever music you're listening to you can change the track and all you'll do is select up or down to change tracks again very useful telephone when your car is connected through Bluetooth you can then 
uh, instead of using the, the screen here, you could make a phone call using the buttons on the steering wheel. Assist, this is just going into the settings of the car. Uh, I would recommend leaving all of this on. And then service, this is useful. If you need to check your tire pressure, uh, it always shows after a moment, after a while you've been driving. And assist plus, that allows you to check when your next service is due. And messages, that's just a useful function of the car to tell you if, if you ever need to top up your fluid for your um, screen wash, etc. Now if I go into settings, in this section you can change uh, certain settings of the car such as the electric folding door mirrors, how the lights of the interior and exterior work and other useful settings. What I tend to do is just leave the car in trip and I like to have the speedometer. You have got the speedometer here but I like to have it nice and clearly there. You'll also notice zero kilometers. Uh, because this is a UK car we use MPH but um, for legal reasons we have to have kilometers there and if you're um, in Europe or something you can change this from MPH to K KPH which is quite a useful uh, function. Top tip while I'm on this area on the dash if you see that arrow there it's pointing uh, towards my left that means my petrol cap is on the left hand side of the car so next time I go to the fuel station I know which way to park my car this part you want to make sure the temperature of the car is at 90 degrees at the moment I haven't really driven my car so it's at 80 that's normal but ideally it needs to be at 90 after it's been driven you can see here an A with a line. That is for my eco stop start. That line around the A symbol means that my eco stop start is not working. That could be for many reasons, such as it's too hot or too cold outside, or um, I may be using other parts of the car and uh, using too much energy for the eco stop start to work. Now moving to the centre console, you can actually adjust this armrest which is very useful. You've got some storage here as well and you can see uh, you can connect your smartphone to the car. One USB is for the smartphone and one is to charge. Yeah, you got some storage for drinks, this actually pops out if you need it to, it's quite useful. You got some storage in here, a bit of storage here and your 12 volt socket. What I'm going to do first is show you how to connect your smartphone to the infotainment system. So what you'll want to do is select telephone, you'll be greeted to this screen. Then go to your phone, make sure the Bluetooth's on. So mine Bluetooth's on. I'll just unlock the phone. Once I've unlocked it, go to settings, go to Bluetooth, make sure it's switched on. And then I'll go using the dial here, the rotary dial. I can rotate, push to select things. This is the back button. And then these are your favorites, which I don't really use, but you can. I'll probably show how to use that in a future video. So all I'll do is select the rotary dial. I can also move the rotary dial like this to get to different parts of the screen. I'll select telephone. I can select Apple CarPlay if I want to. Select telephone. And now I'll select connect device. Now I'll select search by telephone. 
this part of the screen is basically means now I need to go onto my phone to connect to Bluetooth. So it's popped up here, MB Bluetooth. Select MB Bluetooth. That mess, that code should be the exact same as on the display here. It is, so I'll select pair. I'll also select yes on the infotainment screen. Here you want to allow. And I always say yes to this part of the screen. And then cancel search. Now that's connected via Bluetooth. If I go into it by pressing the I button, I can see everything is connected. What I want to do is switch on show notifications. So when I've done that, I will also get text messages appearing, which is quite useful. So you'll know you've been tech you've been sent a message, a little envelope will pop up here. It's very useful. And now you've got access to your um, contacts by selecting down. You can uh, also make phone calls by pressing the numbers here. And they all appear there. When you're ready to make a phone call, just press this button. Or you can use the steering wheel buttons, which is quite useful. Next, I'll show you how to use the navigation. If your car has been optioned with the command system, uh, the sat nav may look different. So if I select Navi there, or if I push up, I can select sat nav here. All I'll do is select destination, and here you can use your previous destination if required, or address entry. And here you just put in the postcode. That's what I would recommend. Type in your postcode. And then once you're ready, just select OK. Now, when you select navigation in a car with the Garmin sat nav, you'll know it's using Garmin navigation because this SD card has to be inside for the sat nav to work. Once it's loaded, you'll get this screen. Select, push down and then you'll be to this screen and where to allows you then to put in the address and I, again I always use the postcode just type in the postcode so you can use the rotary dial on the left type it in manually I'm just going to pretend to use this one once you're happy select down and then press go when you're ready. You can also save the destination if required. Now I'm back in my car. I'm just going to show you what these other buttons do. When I select radio, I'll be greeted to this screen. If I push up as well, again, you can see those four buttons are here as well. And you've got the vehicle button, which is right here. And then to change radio station, you can see you just rotate this dial. You'll also see I've just received a text message. There's the envelope. To set presets, it's very easy in this car. What I do is hold down the number that you want to save the reset preset as. So if I push and hold, that's now saved as number eight, which is quite useful. You can also save it by pushing this dial down and now I can save it at a certain number so let's say I want to save it as number 12 now set it as number 12 which is quite useful to use the presets you can enter the number like so using the buttons on here or you can select the the list only so these are all my presets presets it's only going to show presets but if I want to show all the radio channels just select that and I've got all the other radio stations another useful thing while I'm on this screen 
you can also change uh, the treble, the mid-tone and the bass. All I'll do is select down and I can move to different sections like so. And to change the settings, I push down and I can change the number. Once I'm happy, push down on the rotary dial and then push up on the rotary dial and I can then change the balance and fader. Now, I find this very useful if I've got rear passengers in the car, such as my little one. On a long journey, I let her use the iPad and she'll have her headphones on. And then what I do is set my speakers of the car to the front so she can listen to her music clearly and I can listen to my music clearly at the front without headphones, which is quite useful. Pull that back. Now I'm just going to select vehicle. I've got the same button here. I select that. Here you can change some settings of the car. You've also got uh, the manual, which is quite useful. You can change the time here if you need to. Vehicle settings. You can just change certain bits. Uh, my favorite bit is changing the ambient lighting. So I've set mine to max and the color right now I've chosen red. This car has got the premium package. Uh, the premium plus package also has this option where you can change the ambient lights. You can see these are some of my favorite settings that I leave, like, but you can change this for yourself if you need to. Moving down, I'm just gonna show you what these buttons do. So my car is optional with the heated seats. That means it's on maximum. And then as you go down, that's less and less. And when there's no light, it's off. This is for the parking sensors. Again, an option. That means now the parking sensors are off. So this is useful if your car is ever being washed or if you're in a high traffic area and uh, there's lots of people walking around the car parking sensors won't bother you. I'll put that back on. This button is for your eco stop stop. So you can see that it is now off. If I switch the light on, when the light is on that means the eco stop starts on. And you can see the symbol disappears when I switch it off. This is for your hazards and then dynamic select. When you press this button You'll get a message here, and you'll also get a message here to state which dynamic uh, setting you've set. So you've got individual, eco, and comfort, and sport. Individual allows you to then set the transmission, the steering feel, the eco stop start if you want it to be on or off, and how you want the AC to work, which is quite useful. I tend to leave the car in comfort and you can see which dynamic select you've selected by seeing the C here. If I change it to sport, you can see it also changes. This button is blank. Usually I think that's for the AMG models. So the A45 AMG, that button is for the exhaust system. This is for the heated seats for the passenger moving down. This is for your climate control. So at the moment I've switched it off, but if I select that button, it then puts the climate control on. And you can see, I can set a different temperature for my passenger, and I can have a different temperature for the driver's seat. If you want it to be the same, just select zone. And then you can see it marries up to whatever the driver selects. But if I change it here, it then goes into different zones for the climate control. I tend to leave the climate control on auto. You can do it to your own settings if you want to, but I find if you leave it in auto, the car will then distribute all of the air accordingly 
I find that I don't get a misty screen for all the windows around the car. The only time I need to take control is usually in the mornings if uh, I've got a misty front and rear screen. And all I'll do is select these. I usually leave it for five, 10 minutes. And then once it's clear, I'll stick it back into auto. One thing I need to recommend is leaving the temperature at 22 degrees. That's what Mercedes-Benz have recommended. And that's the ideal temperature for any human beings in the car. If you select mode, you can choose where you want the air to then distribute. Again, just leave in auto. But this button is very useful. So if you press this button, let's say you're on the motorway and you're going past the farm and you get like a nasty smell. When you press that button, that will try and get rid of that nasty smell for you. That's quite useful. This is the AC button. So if you ever want to switch off the AC, you can. But again, I recommend having that on because it's designed to keep the cabin nice and fresh. And you have got a pollen filter in the car, which will help for anyone suffering with allergies. You'll see this button rest. So this is very useful on a cold day and you need to pop to the shops. When you switch off the car, you press this button and you can then leave the car. You can then leave the car Go into the shops, lock the car. When you come back to the car, the car should still be nice and warm for you. When I switch on the car, you can see the rest button goes off. Now moving up, here you have your sun visor, and you have got a useful light with vanity mirror, and you can store useful parking tickets or cards here. Moving up here. Now, you only need to use this button if you were ever being towed. This button is very useful. So if you press that button and you switch off the car, when you press it, you can now leave someone inside the car and when you lock the car, the alarm won't go off. So that's very useful if you've left someone in the car and you've popped into the shop quickly and you want to lock the passengers inside the car. Now, the SOS function, this could save your life, so it's very important you use this in an emergency. If you're in an accident, you can press that switch and then you'll give permission to Mercedes-Benz to let them know, this is my position, uh, please help me. And basically this car's got its own SIM card. It will then send the location of where you are to Mercedes-Benz. They will then speak to you through the speakers of this car. They will check if you're okay. If they don't get a response, they'll just send out and everyone to you. That's including police, ambulance, and even the fire. If you're in an accident and the airbags go off, the system will automatically do the SOS system for you. So again, someone will try and speak to you through the speakers. If you don't, if they don't get a reaction from you, they'll just send out all the emergency services to you. So that's a very useful function. If you were to ever break down, or say you had a tire puncher and you don't want to sort it out yourself, you have got the contacts from Mercedes-Benz right here in the door sill. You can call that number anytime, it's 24 seven. That's breakdown cover, that's included with your car. And if your car's within uh, under three years old, you'll get that cover. If the car is older than three years, but it's had a full Mercedes-Benz service history from a main dealer, then you'll automatically get that. So every year you get it car the car serviced, then you will get breakdown service for 12 more months. I always recommend getting your car serviced from Mercedes-Benz just because of that service that you get with the breakdown cover. As long as you get the car serviced for every year by Mercedes-Benz, you will get that breakdown cover up to 30 years. I think it's fantastic value. Now moving up to this section of the car, 
I can store glasses here. I've got a reading light for both sides. This is to put all the lights on in the car. This is to switch it off. If I leave in the middle, the lights will automatically come on when I open the door. This button here is for the rear lights of the car. If I switch it off, I can switch it off as well. And then you've got your grab handles as well. And that's all around for the rear passengers as well. One function I need to show you is the hold function. So when the car's in drive, and let's pretend you get to a uh, traffic light, if you double tap the brake, you'll notice a little message come up saying hold. I've done that by double tapping like so. So if I push and then push again, that means the car is now in a hold function. This is useful if you're out for traffic lights, you've stopped, you can then rest your feet like so. And when you're ready to go, all you'll do is press the accelerator and that will release the car and you'll be able to drive. It's useful rather than putting the car into park. And while I'm here, you'll notice that P sign. So when you're driving under 20 miles per hour, the car will be constantly looking to park itself. You'll get a little arrow to say that the car can park itself. I'll show how to use that in a separate video, but that is a really cool function. You only have that option if you have the parking sensors. So if you have this button here, that means your car should have the active park assist system. Now I'll just show you how to open up the bonnet because that might be useful in an emergency. So you'll just pull this like so. You'll hear a little bang. You can see now it's just partially open. To release it, you'll want to put your hand inside and there's a little lever here. Just push that. You'll need two hands. You can see I've just used this to prop that bonnet. And you can see this is to top up the washer fluid. If you need to top up oil, you can. And then you get your dipstick to check your oil. Again, I can't, I've never had to do any of this because I take my car to my local dealer to get it serviced and to get the winter and summer check done, which includes topping up fluids. To close it, just put that back there. All I'll do is hold it like so, and then let go. This is the best way to close the bonnet. I hope you enjoy this video. Please subscribe if you really liked this content and you wanna learn more about the A-Class. If you have any suggestions, please don't hesitate to message. And also I wanted to say, please share it with anyone you think will enjoy watching this video and learn from it. Check out my playlist for A-Class as this will show more content on the A-Class. And also please like it as it will help me out and the channel. Thank you again for watching this video. If you have any suggestions on any future videos, please don't hesitate to message. I'm really enjoying making these videos. So please don't hesitate to ask me a question. Thank you again for watching.